Welcome back to our summaries of the Sabbath School lessons for the second quarter of 2023, titled Three Cosmic Messages. We're studying about the battle between good and evil, the battle between Christ and Satan. Our study this week focuses on the everlasting gospel. We find that in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. There are some people, when they think of the book of Revelation, think about mystic symbols, cryptic images, strange beasts, bizarre scenes. But yet, Revelation is all about Jesus. Jesus is mentioned in the book of Revelation as the Lamb of God at least 28 times. We read about the gospel in Revelation 14, verse 6. It says, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth, to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Notice what it says. The first aspect of this eternal message that's so vitally important for all human beings is the everlasting gospel. Now, there are two questions we need to ask. Why is the gospel called everlasting and what is the gospel? The reason it's called everlasting is this. Because deeply embedded within the heart of God is his love for the creatures he made. And the gospel is everlasting because Christ's love is everlasting. Now, there are a couple places in the Bible, in fact, more than one, that talk about this idea of the everlasting gospel. Revelation 13, verse 8, And all that dwell on the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, isn't that rather strange? I thought Jesus was slain 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross. He was. But why does it say that he was slain from the foundation of the world? Because when sin entered the world, it brought pain to Christ's heart. And the plan of salvation, which the Father and Son had coveted, should man fall, that plan was then put into action. And every lamb sacrificed down through the Old Testament revealed or portrayed the sacrifice of Christ. Now, but was the plan of salvation actually initiated before the fall of Adam? The Bible does tell us that it was. You'll find that very clearly explained in Monday's lesson on the everlasting gospel. You can look there, for example, uh, in the book of Peter. The Bible describes the fact that the plan of salvation was initiated, not as an afterthought. We see the everlasting gospel idea in Monday and Tuesday's lesson as well. Um, in Tuesday's lesson, Desire of Ages, page 22, says this, The plan for our redemption was not an afterthought, a plan formulated after the fall of Adam. It was a revelation of the mystery, which has been kept in silence through times eternal. It was an unfolding of the principles that from eternal ages have been the foundation of God's throne. It's Desire of Ages, page 22. So the eternal gospel speaks not only of the past and present, but it speaks also of the future with hope. See, the eternal gospel speaks of the past. That is God's love revealed in heaven that when the human race was going to be created, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit met in a divine council meeting. And giving human beings the power of choice they knew the potentiality and the reality of the fall of sin. So at that moment, they covenanted together that if indeed, and when indeed would be more accurate to say the human race sinned, that Christ would come as the divine sacrifice, the revelation of the Father's love and grace and goodness. So the, the gospel is eternal because God's love is eternal. The gospel is eternal because it's ever present. It speaks to you and me. Like we've said in, for example, in Monday's lesson, we are justified today freely by God's grace. Grace is a declaration of God's righteousness. God justifies those who by faith accept Jesus. 
And God's love for us was demonstrated when we were yet sinners. So the gospel is, is present tense. Through Christ, we are delivered from the condemnation of sin. Through Christ, our sins are forgiven. Through Christ, we're pardoned. This indeed is the gospel. But the gospel is not only past and present, it's future, because it reminds us that one day we can live in eternity forever. One day we can walk with Jesus. One day the harmony that was broken by sin will be restored. One day the gulf that has been spanned, that has, is so wide uh, because of sin, has been spanned by Jesus Christ. So in Revelation 14, verse 6, we're emphasizing two aspects of that text. Remember it says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven with the everla having the everlasting gospel to preach to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. So this gospel is to go to the ends of the earth. It's to leap across geographical boundaries. It's to bridge ethnic groups. It's to go to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. What, how does this impact you and how does it impact me? It impacts us in some significant ways. Life has purpose. Life has meaning. We're living for something bigger than ourselves. We're living for something larger than ourselves. We're living to proclaim a message that will go to the ends of the earth. We, along with millions of others, are sharing Christ so the work of God can be finished, so Jesus can come. This gives purpose to our lives. There's a quote that I came across not long ago by an author by the name of Paul David Tripp. He wrote a book called The Quest for More, Living for Something Bigger Than Yourself. I've quoted this on Wednesday's lesson, and it says this, human beings were created to be part of something bigger than their own lives. Sin causes us to shrink our lives down to the size of our lives. The grace of Christ is given to rescue us from the claustrophobic confines of our own little self-focused kingdom and frees us to live for the eternal purpose and satisfying delights of the kingdom of God, living for something bigger than yourself. If you're teaching this lesson or you're studying it, there's two things I want you to go away with. Number one, the gospel is for you. Through Jesus, your sins can be forgiven. Through Jesus, your life can be transformed. Through the good news of Christ, what is the gospel? It's the good news that through Jesus, our sins can be forgiven. It's the good news that there is no condemnation, that there is that those in, that are in Christ. What is the gospel? It is the grace of God received by faith into our lives that cleanses us. I want you to go away with a sense that God's love for you is never ending. It was in his heart in eternity past. It's in his heart today. And it's in his heart in eternity. The second thing I want you to go away with is that God calls you and me to be the light of the world, to be ambassadors for Christ, to be the salt of the earth. He calls us to something bigger than ourselves, to share his love, to share his goodness, to share his grace with every nation, kindred, tug, and people, but the people around us. Let your heart rejoice that in Christ there is salvation and in Christ there's purpose in life. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that through Jesus there is purpose in life, that there's meaning in life, that through Jesus we can live eternally and through Jesus, we have a reason to live, to share your love and grace with others. In Christ's name, amen.